Hi my little bunnies, it's Mio here and I have a polymer clay tutorial for you all. I'll be showing you guys how to create this miniature gingerbread house and snowman. This tutorial actually is in collaboration with several other polymer clay artists on YouTube and I want to give a huge thanks to Heather Wells for hosting such a wonderful idea. So please check out everyone else's gingerbread house. I provided links to everyone's tutorial in the down bar. And of course, for more videos like these, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get this tutorial started. For the gingerbread house, you're gonna start off with a brown piece of colored clay, and you're going to roll this into a flat, thin sheet. You don't want it to be too thin. I would say mine was about three to four millimeters thick. You're going to need to cut out the foundation of your gingerbread house and honestly I didn't use any patterns, I kind of freestyled it with my blade here. So as you can see I'm just going to cut off a rectangle and this is going to be one side of my gingerbread house. To create two sides that are completely identical, once you've cut out your rectangle I just place this on top of a blank sheet of clay and I used my blade and cut out the exact same pattern so I would have two copies. You'll also need to cut out a house shape piece of clay. And again, I use the width of the house the same as the first original rectangle I created. And then you're going to need two copies of these house shape looking pieces of clay. So now that you have these pieces, you're going to need two more pieces to form the rooftop. And what I used is the side of my house to form the width of the rooftop. And I used the rectangle that I used originally to form the length of the rooftop. Really, it's just going to look like another rectangle. And if this pattern just seems really complicated, there are a lot of patterns that you can go online and download. Once you have all the clay pieces cut out, you're going to start putting them together. I'm using a clay tool to help smooth out the edges so it looks less rough around the edges and a little more organic. Once you're happy with how the edges turned out, you can start putting the pieces together. Just make sure you spend extra time making sure the edges line up really nicely. And one of the things I use to help hold the pieces together is I would take my blade and help smooth the edges into each other so they'll actually stay stuck together. It's really important that you use a very gentle hand putting your gingerbread house together because it's not very solid yet, but once you cook it and it's more solid, you don't have to worry about being as gentle. Now you're going to pick several colored clays that you want to use to decorate your house. These are the colors I chose, and you're going to roll each of these colored clays into a really flat thin sheet about one millimeter thick. Using a circle mold, I'm punching out several circles to help decorate the rooftop of my gingerbread house. If you don't have a mold like this, you can use different things in the household, like the back of your pen cap or anything that really has a circular shape. With the leftover clay, I'm just rolling them into long thin snakes and I'm going to roll these together to form beautiful candy canes to decorate the house. If you never made a clay cane before, the key to having a beautiful cane is to having really good proportions. You want to make sure each of the pieces of clay you're using are even. You don't want one color to be more overpowering than the other. And as you can see here, I placed a piece of white clay in the center to help fill up the center of my cane and I'm gently rolling it in my fingers. Another key to forming a beautiful candy cane is to make sure when you roll it, you add even pressure all along throughout the length of the cane. You don't want to make one side more pressured than the other, otherwise it will break or become thinner and not as pretty as it should be. So as you can see here, I rolled out one beautiful cane here and I made them into different sizes. I also made a few traditional candy canes that are the red and white ones that you normally see during the holidays and you can make all different types of colored candy canes. They're completely up to you. This is just the color scheme I've chosen because my house is actually in the red and green scheme during the holidays. Once you're happy with how the swirls turned out, you can cut them and roll them into candy canes and I made several of these just so that I can decorate the house with however many I want. I placed all my pieces on a foil sheet and baked it in the oven for 20 minutes at 250 degrees Fahrenheit until everything is rock solid as you can see here. 
the reason why I pre-baked everything is because it's actually easier to decorate your house once everything is solid and we'll bake it again at the very end once we're done decorating them. Now these canes that I baked earlier, I'm going to slice them into thin little sheets about one to two millimeters thick and these are going to form little peppermints to decorate the little house. And if you're wondering how I'm going to decorate the house, I'm going to need some frosting. So I'm taking some really soft polymer clay. This is the ultra soft one that I bought from Sculpty. And I'm tearing them into small pieces into a disposable container. And I'm going to take some liquid polymer clay and mix them up together to form what looks like white frosting. The key is to not put too much liquid clay in there, otherwise it will be too goopy and it will just slide all over your gingerbread house. You still want it to be thick enough that you can spread it and hold its shape. So once you spread on a nice even layer of makeshift frosting, you can start decorating your house however you want. You don't have to follow the patterns that I've done here, but if you want to follow my pattern, you absolutely can. I really wanted a lot of color jam-packed onto the rooftop of my gingerbread house and the sides of it to be a little more simple, but again, you can decorate it however you want. If you want a general good tip to making a very good looking gingerbread house, I would say is to utilize as many different things as you can. As you can see here, I use the chips for the rooftop, I put peppermint candies all over, and I put the peppermint canes to decorate the sides. Just really get creative and decorate your house however you want. And of course, don't forget to decorate the bottom of the gingerbread house as well. And if you're wondering how I drew on the windows and doors with the liquid clay, I actually didn't. I used regular polymer clay and I rolled it into long thin snakes and cut them up to form the pieces of the windows and the doors to help stick it onto the side of the house. As you can see here, there's a little bit of clear polymer clay on the sides to help stick it onto it and once you bake it, it'll stay on the house really, really well. And creating this house was so much fun for me because they remind me of those pre-made gingerbread house kits that you can buy at Walmart and Target and sometimes at different craft stores. They have everything done for you and all you have to do is put it together and decorate a house. And that's literally what I felt like I was doing here. I just made a whole bunch of different types of polymer candies and I'm just decorating the house that I created. And the only nice thing about this, even though it's not edible, is I can keep it for forever. So once you're done decorating, go ahead and bake this in the oven. And now I'm going to make my snowman. So I took some white polymer clay, rolled them into circles. And as you can see, the body here is actually smaller than the head. And I flattened the top part of the body and the bottom part of the head so that they can stick on better together. I'm inserting here a gold pin into the head and that way it can hold and stick onto the body a lot stronger. I'm using the candy cane I formed earlier to flatten out and form the scarf for my snowman. And with the pin, I'm marking where I'm going to put two animal eyes on my snowman. Um, if you want to roll out some black clay, you absolutely can. I'm just using the animal eyes because they're just so easy to use. And I also made a nice little orange carrot nose for my snowman. As you can see, most of his face is on the lower half of his head. That's because the top part of his head, I'm going to form a little hat. I also gave him two little buttons, and to make the buttons look realistic, I'm using a pin to poke four little holes. And once you're done with this, all you need to do is make the arms. So I'm taking some black clay here, and I'm rolling it into a thick snake. It's about four millimeters thick. You don't want it to be too thin. I'm inserting a gold pin in the center to make it more solid and stronger. And this is also going to help me insert this into my snowman. So I'm going to put this on the sides. You can go ahead and pop your snowman into the oven and bake it. And while it's being baked in the oven, you can go ahead and crochet a hat. Now, I'm not going to go through the details on how I crocheted this because you can see my other videos on how I crochet a hat but I decided crocheting a hat would be really adorable and looks really warm and fuzzy for the winter time. So all I did is crocheted a basic circle and I rolled up the bottom part so it looks kind of like a beanie. And to form the top part of my beanie, I took some green yarn and rolled it around a roller, but you can use a fork if you want, at least 20 times. And you're gonna roll off all this yarn and you're gonna tie a knot down the center. If you want a really good poof ball for the hat, just make sure the knot is really tight and you really did center it really well. 
Then take your scissors and cut all the loops that you see here. And the more you cut, you'll notice that it starts to fluff out into a cute little ball. So my piece ball is not quite perfect, but don't worry, just take some scissors and cut off all the parts that are uneven and you can round it off into a nice little circle. And once you're happy with the shape of it, you can tie it down onto your adorable little beanie. I just took my needle and pulled it through the center to tie a knot. And once you're done tying the knot, your hat is pretty much done. Just go ahead and position it onto your snowman and your snowman should be all ready for the winter time. I know this tutorial had a lot of steps for you guys. I try to shorten it as much as I can, but I hope you enjoyed it. For more videos like these, please subscribe if you haven't already and give me a thumbs up. And please check out the other crafters tutorials. They have some beautiful homes that they made. I'm so excited and so thrilled to be a part of this collaboration. So again, I want to give a shout out and a thanks to Heather Wells for this wonderful winter idea. And I hope you guys get excited about the winter time. Happy crafting everyone and I will catch you guys soon. Bye!